Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ruth chapter 4, verse 10, as well as James chapter 5, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you that you are revealing yourself to us. You're revealing us to us, Lord God, and how we compare to to you lord god our righteousness is as filthy rags but your covering is so perfect and so good for us we love you and we praise you in jesus name we pray amen all right you guys ruth chapter 4 verse 10 also ruth the moabite the widow of mahalan i have brought to be my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. All right. And so this is, a, we had this particular Ruth scripture before. And so it says, Ruth the Moabite, the widow of Mahalan, I have brought to be my wife. And of course, we know that this is Boaz speaking about Ruth. And it says to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance that the name of the dead may not be cut off. So you have Ruth who is in this dead situation. We've talked about that before. It, it's a it's an unexpected blessed situation, right? Like this situation is completely dead. Ruth does not have a husband. She doesn't even have her brother-in-law you know, to fall back on. She has her mother-in-law. And so instead of leaving this dead situation, this unlikely candidate, as far as um, being in the, the lineage of Christ and being blessed and, and even coming into this Jewish household, um, this unlikely candidate, Ruth, who's in this dead situation, um, chooses to stay there, right? She chooses to be steadfast. She chooses to not leave the situation, which in this day and age, you know, a woman who would stay in that type of situation when she still has the potential to be a mother, the potential to still be prosperous, you know, especially a hardworking woman, a woman like Ruth, you know, she could have done so many other things and returned to even her own family's household. But instead, she chose to leave that situation, uh, stay in her situation and and be faithful to her mother-in-law to remain by her side, right? Even though she had nothing to bless her with, she remained dead fast, right? Even in the face of her own sister-in-law leaving, she chose to stay, right? She said, where you go, I'll go, right? And so um, unlikely candidate, she's in a dead situation. And so, you know, God blesses her in this dead situation. And this is the, the part where she is basically being blessed and it's being witnessed, right? So it says, um, name of the dead. Let me read it from the beginning. Also Ruth and Moabite, the widow of Mahalan, I have brought to be my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. So there are witnesses to the blessing of this woman, this non-Jewish woman, right? Who's just Gentile woman, this woman in this dead situation, this woman who did not have potential for a future, um, she it's being resurrected, right? There's a resurrection occurring and she is being blessed in this resurrection. She is, she is being given basically in the same sense as, you know, when we're blessed by Jesus, our redeemer, um, he gives us this blessing, this resurrection, and he gives us eternal life, right? He, he is not just giving us a blessing for today. He is giving us an eternal blessing, and Ruth is eternally blessed in this. She is related to Christ, right? She is in the lineage of Christ. All right. And so this is completed today with, <clears throat> excuse me, James chapter five, um, b verse 11. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job and you have seen the purpose of the Lord 
how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. All right. And so we know that Job was a steadfast man, right? It says, behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. Okay. So this is not just a blessing that the Lord sprinkles down, right? There is something involved in it. It's steadfastness. And and how do we become steadfast? How do we endure? How do we stand and hold firm to something? Well, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need God's power in us. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, whether we are base, whether we are bound, whether we are enduring hardship, whether it's we're in a season of ease, regardless, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. It says, behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. So Job went through a thing, right? He, and, and whether he was abasing, whether he was abounding, he was going through that thing and he was remaining steadfast in God's love. He loved God still. He did not allow his situation to, to turn him from the love of God. It says, you have heard of the steadfastness of Job and you have seen the purpose of the Lord. So we have a hearing and we have a seeing, and we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we know that through this word um, that we are receiving from God, as well as through the story of Job, through the story of Ruth, we are growing in faith, right? Because faith comes by hearing. It says, you have heard of the steadfastness of Job. It says, you have seen the purpose of the Lord. So God is causing our eyes to be open to his purposes, to his will for our lives, and not just the things that we want to do and the things that we think with our own mind are good for ourselves, right? God is causing our eyes, the eyes of our heart to be enlightened. He wants us to see his purposes in our lives. And so we hear about the steadfastness of Job, which that stands for being in the word of God. It stands for, for reading his word, um, um, taking in his word, growing in our faith. And we know inside spiritually, we can see the purposes of the Lord. And so it says how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Wow, we can see the mercies of God all throughout the word, right? We can see the the compassion of the Lord all throughout the word. But not only that, we feel it. We know it in our innermost being. We can see it with the eyes of our heart. We know the compassion and the mercy of the Lord, right? He is with us. He is, and, and for those who are steadfast in him, abiding in him, um, who is the Lord, he is compassionate. He is merciful. How many of you have experienced the compassion of God where God has taken himself and, and put himself there with you in your pain, in your suffering, when you have that moment where you're breaking down and you feel his presence, he is right there with with you, right? His arms are around you. He is the only one. Have you ever felt like you were just the only one on earth? Like no one understood you. No one knows what you're going through, right? But God is right there. He is especially right there, ever present right there when you're going through those things. He is right there. He is a compassionate God. He's not a God who has not felt those things. He has felt those things. He sent his son so that he could feel those things and go through those things that man has gone through. And he's right there with you, feeling for you, crying with you, right? When he lost Lazarus, what happened? He didn't just go raise Lazarus. He cried, right? Even knowing that he was going to raise Lazarus, he was moved with compassion for his sisters, right? And in that grief, he felt that thing and God feels that thing for you. It says how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Instead of delivering vengeance, which is what we would deserve for all the sins that we've done, God is holding that thing back and giving us a blessing of grace, a blessing of atonement. He is blessing your life. Have you ever been like doing something gone on a vacation gone to the park gone done doing something and you realize I don't deserve this goodness right like this this is just such goodness that is beyond what I deserve but instead of 
pouring out your bowl of wrath on me, Lord. You let me go to this park and experience the beauty of, of this beautiful water, right? Like, or, or something like that. Things that are unexpected, that are just beautiful. Even just having your quiet time with a cup of coffee and realizing for a moment, I'm not at war right now. Like my country is not at war at this very moment. I can sit and I can just in peace, take in this blessing, right? That is mercy. That is compassion of the Lord. The Lord cares about you. He cares about your circumstance and he wants you to remain steadfast. Just like Job, even if you're going through something, refuse to curse God, refuse to walk away from the Lord, refuse those things. Those are things that the enemy is causing you to be enticed with. No, don't go back to your old ways. Stay with God. Remain steadfast steadfast. Let's go back and look at the completion verse with Ruth. Ruth was steadfast. And because of her steadfastness, she was chosen to perpetuate um, the name of the dead through her ex-husband and with Boaz, right? She was able to be taken into this family and blessed, right? Not cursed, blessed. She was blessed by hanging on to Naomi. She was blessed by staying in this very hard situation where she was out there in the fields picking um the harvest, picking up the things that were fell, falling down to the ground, right? She was out there all day trying to get just food for them, right? She could have gotten food just for herself, but instead she chose to take care of her and her mother-in-law. God blessed her for her steadfastness, for her faithfulness, right? And God caused her to not only be blessed a little bit, right? But be blessed perpetually. Her name will never be removed from the Messiah's lineage. Her name will never be removed from from this this steadfast goodness uh, of of hey look at what this child of God did right God can take an unlikely candidate who's in a dead situation and resurrect it to eternal life he has his purposes and he is going to show his compassion and his mercy towards those who are steadfast towards those who believe in him right you are his child do you believe in him you, it is witnessed here in Ruth chapter 4 verse 10 it is being witnessed by others right and and we are going through a season where people are going to witness the move of God people are going to witness the taking of his bride people are going to witness this with their own eyes some of the people who who they've spoken against and 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 done such ugly things to his bride will be taken, right? And she will be blessed eternally. But we must remain steadfast. We must remain unmovable, always abounding in the word of truth, right? We have to be steadfast in the things of the Lord. And he is going to be compassionate. He is going to be merciful toward us. Thank you, Lord God. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that we need to be steadfast, Lord God. You are giving us your spirit. You're pouring your spirit out on all flesh. And we need that in order to be steadfast. Help us to grow in your spirit. Help us to grow in our do. God, help us to grow in our go. Help us to grow in our, our, our works, Lord God. Faith without works is dead, Lord. And we want to be steadfast. And in order to be steadfast, Lord God, we have to remain in you. Lord Jesus, help us to do that thing. Help us to walk it out with you day by day by day, never giving up, Lord God. And when we fall down, Lord Jesus, we know you're picking us right back up again to keep going. We know you are carrying us when we have no more strength left. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Father God. There's nobody like you. We worship you. We give you glory, El Shaddai. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for your compassion and mercy. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you would like to receive Christ into your heart, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. 
I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this for me. Forgive me for all of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord God, from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way. He is going to show you the church home you need to go to, the place where you know that you need to go to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. He is going to show you um, other believers to be around so that you can stay strong in the word of God. He's also going to, you know, show you how to go out and make disciples of all men. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.